Good morning from St. John's Episcopal Church in and beyond Old Town Saginaw in the Diocese of Eastern Michigan. Today is October the 25th of 2020, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. The bulletin for this morning's Liturgy of the Word can be downloaded from our Facebook and YouTube post, as well as the St. John's website. And of course, you can always pray with us using the Book of Common Prayer, beginning on page 355. With you at home, this is St. John's and St. Matthew's worshiping together online. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart anyone of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the ways of sinners, nor in 
sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bank fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals. Whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet? If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. From this morning's Gospel passage, Jesus says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love God, love your neighbor. 
We hear this a lot, especially in the Episcopal Church. But what does it mean? As self-proclaimed followers of Jesus Christ, how do we live this out in 21st century America? A time when it is easy, if not culturally acceptable in some corners, to hate those who differ from us, whoever we are, whoever they are. Rowan Williams, the former Archbishop of Canterbury, once gave a lecture in which he described the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as one whose entire being is for the other. Now think about this. Because God is the creator of all things, the very ground of being, if we could say that, because God is complete within God's self, God has no need. God lacks nothing within the Godhead. The relationship of love between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all of that is complete. And it is precisely because God has no need that God can be for the other without asking the question, what's in it for me? God is for us. That's part of what it means to say that God is love. And because God is love, and because we as God's creatures are predisposed to reject or not fully accept God as love because we are sinful, we are in need. When we have the opportunity to ask, uh, act for the other, unlike God, We do ask the question at some level, what's in it for me? We are not complete, and as a result, the world is not as it should be. It doesn't take much effort for us to look out in the world in which we live to see the effects of human sin, this incompleteness, because we look out and we get a sense that things aren't as they should be human sin and our ability to recognize injustice, as far as I'm concerned, that strangely proves the existence of God. We know in our gut that life doesn't match up to God's ideal. And this incompleteness, it's actually part of what motivates us to strive for wholeness and ask questions like how the Christian life might get us where to where we think we're supposed to be. The good news for us in the midst of this mess is that God is not distant from creation. God is not removed. God has not abandoned us. No, God became a human being in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. And we, rem- we remember from the early part of Matthew's gospel that there was a different name given to the second person of the Trinity who took on human flesh. There's Jesus to be sure. But the other name for him is Emmanuel, which means God with us. The God who is for us is also the God who is with us. Because we are God's creatures, because we are created in the image of God, as we learn in Genesis, a key component to living life in this world is becoming, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the people God desires us to be. When we have the God we know in Jesus at the center of our lives, and when we take to heart the fact that God is for us. When we know that God loves us, we can begin to receive God's love in our own lives and in turn, truly love others. We, like God, although imperfectly in this life, we, like God, can be for the other. Jesus said, 
You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are Form 4, found in the Worship Bulletin and in the Book of Common Prayer on page 388. Let us pray for the Church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. In the St. John's family, we pray for Bob, Teresa, Barbara, Judy, Brian, Mike, Shirley, Nancy, Alan, Jane, Sharon, David and Nanette, Rod, Dave, Karen, Ted, and the Standing Committee of the Diocese of Eastern Michigan. For Lauren Denae, celebrating her birthday this week, and for those who may be celebrating wedding anniversaries this week. From St. Matthew's, we pray for Nick, Janice, Becky, Beth, Rob, Tim, Trish, Michelle, Sarah, Jason, and Donna. And Donna Perriard 
has a birthday this week. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace that you may faithfully live together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. O God, the fountain of wisdom, whose will is good and gracious and whose law is truth, we beseech you so to guide and bless our senators and representatives in Congress, as well as those in the legislature of Michigan, that they may enact such laws as shall please you to the glory of your name and the welfare of his people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. When I think about what I value most about St. John's, there's one word that comes to my mind, and that word is belonging. In these lonely times of isolation, frustration, and uncertainty that we are living in, they are certainly there for us all. It is so important to have a sense of belonging. For me, it can suggest several things relationships with my family and friends, for sure. I certainly value those kinds of bonds. But what is also very important to me are the contacts that I have with each of you at this church, sharing worship time together, phone conversations, pastoral visits, shared meals and conversations, and interesting discussions with Father Kurt. But what is most important and what is the glue that holds all the rest of this together is having a place of belonging at this beautiful church. Having the opportunity to grow in Christ and to learn about who I am and why I belong to Christ and how I can manifest this love in all my relationships. All this in this beautiful setting with all of you. I am most grateful for that and for you, my friends in Christ.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in this holy sacrament. And since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I invite myself with you, I unite myself with you to embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom in unending peace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.